Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 17th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In case you haven't heard yet, Microsoft now officially announced that February's patches will be rolled into the March update. So you will not see a distinct February release. This sounds like a reasonable way to deal with this issue as companies probably would have had a hard time scheduling extra work and so for a special patch Tuesday sometime later in February. Cable modem ISPs are dealing with the fallout from last year's leak of a private key by router maker AVM. AVM is known for its Fritzbox routers, some of which integrate cable modems. The brand is mostly sold in Europe. Initially, German website heise.de reported back in November that some AVM cable modems contain not only AVM's certificate authority certificate, but also the private key to go with it. When reading about this back in November, I didn't give it uh, too much thought as this is somewhat well a typical flaw for routers and and I didn't expect this to have much repercussions beyond AVM, which, like I said, has a fairly limited distribution. But it turns out that for cable modems, uh, this is a flaw that transcends AVM. For a cable modem to work with DOCSIS compatible ISPs, the modem needs to contain a unique certificate that is assigned to the modem. The leaked certificate authority pair was a specific certificate authority signed by the European DOCSIS organization, and it can be used to create rogue certificates that that will in turn enable an attacker to clone mo modems and steal service. There are two root certificate authorities that cable ISPs typically trust. One is the US DOCSIS organization Cable Labs, and the other one is this Euro DOCSIS organization, which is uh, similar to the US version, a little bit different frequency specs, but ISPs tend to trust modems that use certificates verified by either organization. The result is that with AVM's leaked certificate authority, attackers could clone modems well beyond the typical distribution area of AVM modems. Heise also reported later in November that hackers had figured out what was going on with uh, these keys before the flaw was actually openly discussed by Heise. So there are definitely some fake certificates in circulation. The results, cable modem ISPs worldwide have to specifically blacklist the leaked AVM certificate. This could potentially disconnect some users that use legitimate modems produced by AVM. There is not too much that you can do about it as a consumer. If you do have an AVM or Fritzbox cable modem, then please make sure you have the latest firmware. This does not affect DSL modems or Fritzbox routers without integrated cable modem. OpenSSL released an update for OpenSSL 1.1.0. The latest version is now 1.1.0e. The update fixes a single denial of service vulnerability. Most systems currently use the older version 1.0.2, which is not vulnerable. So not really a big deal here. Windows 8.1 and 10 appear to leak clipboard content on a locked system. The exploit is rather simple and uses the narrator feature. If a user enables the narrator on a locked Windows system, and you can do that on a default login screen by pressing the Windows key and enter, then use caps lock and F1 to open the narrator help window. And now you can just uh, 
paste the clipboard of the last logged in user by pressing Control V. This isn't a huge risk, but of course you may have a password or such stored in the clipboard, but overall rather embarrassing and of course could leak sensitive content. The problem can be mitigated by limiting the functionality accessible to users in the lock screen or via third-party utilities that will automatically clear the clipboard after a given time. Address space layout randomization or ASLR has probably been one of the more significant protection mechanisms. Not perfect, but by integrating it into modern operating systems, it certainly has prevented a lot of exploits from working. Now, researchers at the Dutch Raya University have now discovered a vulnerability in a wide range of CPUs that makes it pretty easy to bypass this security feature. The idea of address space layout randomization is to load software into random memory errors, making it difficult for an attacker to really predict where code ends up. The trick employed by these researchers is a side channel attack. CPUs re rely on memory management units or MMUs to control memory access and for efficiency, these MMUs cache recently used memory. So by timing how long it takes to load data from a particular memory address, an attacker can deduct which memory was recently loaded. And this can be used to essentially demask or unmask some of the randomization done by ASLR. Now, it sounds a little bit like a tricky exploit in itself, but turns out it's actually not that difficult to implement. And these researchers managed actually to implement that in JavaScript. So in a fairly high level language without really any direct memory access feature or the like. And they were able to adapt this exploit to 22 different CPU architectures from a wide range of manufacturers. Well, it turns out that pretty much all modern CPUs are organized somewhat similar and that of course makes this exploit work across a wide range of systems. There is no easy fix for this. It would require a redesign in how these CPUs access memory. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.